What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for coming back for season two of the Coventry City Rebuild. Now in the first part we had a little introduction to the club and we also pushed through to the end of season one. You would have seen us finishing 11th in the championship and that was enough for the board to be satisfied with our first season. Now we were going into season two with £700,000 in the bank. We were also going to be losing quite a lot of the first team as there were a lot of contracts that were running out. I weren't prepared to renew some of them especially some of those higher earners who are older members of the squad so we are now pushed forward to the end of season two and today we're going to review everything that has happened since the last episode before revealing how we have got on in season two the first thing i want to touch upon is some transfers and as i said we had quite a lot of players who were coming to the end of their contract a few older first teamers who weren't going to be given new deals we were losing quite a lot of the squad we had seven hundred thousand pounds to play with so we were having to do a bit of wheeling dealing you'll see exactly how it breaks down here so the first thing that we did was had the players that had their contracts expire so george burrows went to airdrie liam kelly went to aberdeen Dinanga went to Bologna, we had Julian De Costa go to Ream, Dabo went to Cardiff and Eccles went to Luton. We sent Dermy Lusala out on loan once again to Exeter and Jay McGrath to Scunthorpe and we finally then started to move players on for money. Victor Goyocares, this was one that I didn't really want to do. The offer came in and I thought it's £2.9 million that we're not going to have in the short term. Let's just cash in on what we've got. He's obviously a player who is probably a little bit too good to play for Coventry anyway so I fear that at some point he's going to ask to move on so we took the deal took the 2.9 million pounds and added it to our 700,000 uh, we sold Danny Cashman to Morecambe Jake Bidwell ended up going to Rotherham a player who wasn't really going to be involved in the first team um, a left-sided player he did play games for us but in the long term I think it was the right deal to take the cash on him we also sent Blaine Lowe, Marco Roos, Casey Palmer, Alfie Gilchrist and Isaac Price out on loan. We have Callum O'Hare. He ended up going to Blackburn, another one that somewhere down the line I think he would have been asking to leave anyway. And when the deal came up to, just to move him on and get that cash in the bank, we just took the opportunity to do that deal there and then. Finally, we have Oliver Tipton, Ben Sheaf and Riley Siddle all going out on loan. Uh, Warsaw, Barnsley and Dagenham and Redbridge are their destination. So we did manage to make £3.2 million of extra transfer funds for ourselves. And then we come across the left-hand side of the screen. Now, as I said, we were having to do some wheeling dealing. Luckily for us, in the crossover of seasons, we know that the bigger teams are going to start to release some players. So we went in and started to poach those free transfers quite early on in the game. Uh, we're getting deals done that we needed to do quite early so we could start to really rebuild this squad. So the first player that we signed was Adam Lewis. Former Liverpool player, has come to us via Livingston, Newport County. Can play anywhere on the left-hand side of the pitch, can also play through the middle. So that versatility of being able to play in different positions is something that is going to be good for us. Maybe not an out-and-out -out first teamer, but somebody who in the future, I think... Uh, if he's called upon, he can just step into wherever we need him. Charlie Wellens was the next player. Uh, comes to us via Oldham. Has played for Manchester United. Um, obviously playing for us now. He's 21 years old. The good thing with all of these young players that we're buying on free transfers is that they may have sell-on potential further on up the line. So it'd be decent if we could get some money back for Charlie Wellens. Um, Lee Harkin was the next one, comes to us from Wolverhampton Wanderers, can play on the left, can play on the right, can play up top, has 13 pace and 14 acceleration, so decent stats for us if we need a piece to just plug in when our first teamers are tired. We signed Ryan Astley, he has come to us from Accrington Stanley, uh, played for Everton and now obviously plays for us. Another one, not 100% sure he's going to be a first teamer, but 22 years old. He is worth £750,000 if we wanted to move him on. He's six foot tall, can play as a uh, central defender and a no-nonsense centre-back, so will fit into our system. Alex Robertson was the next one up. He has played for Manchester United, Ross County, Manchester City, and then comes to us this season. I think he's a good purchase in that in-between where he's probably not good enough to be Premier League quality, but he's good enough for the Championship, which is why City let him go. 
again valued at seven hundred fifty thousand pounds if we if it doesn't work out we move him on we are going to make some money from him the next player is ethan galbraith he has played for manchester united doncaster salford and then comes to us he is a central midfielder plays anywhere through the middle so attacking midfield central and a defensive midfielder uh northern irish 23 years old has made eight appearances for the northern ireland first team so an international coming to the club uh, jack hinchy is up next he has been at brighton and stockport maybe not one who is going to be a first team out and out but a squad player who can just pack it together and give us a little bit of depth and an option in the middle for say a cup game or a non-important league game uh, we signed Tyler Roberts on a free transfer from Wolverhampton Wanderers. Another player who can play left side, right side and through the middle. 14 pace, 15 acceleration and 12 dribbling are the main reasons for that purchase. Uh, Jamie Bowden has come to us. He's there in the Tottenham shirt. He's also played for Oldham and Luton. Another player who has versatility, can play as a defensive midfielder or a midfielder in the centre. Can also play as a centre back. He's five foot nine, so pretty decent size for a midfielder not so great for a centre back uh, Jack Jenkins he's a former Leeds United and Salford player he is 22 years old can play as a, a, a midfielder a defensive midfielder or an attacking midfielder and one who I think could be on the fringes of the first team quite quickly I think he has something about him and could break in and have a game here or there we then have Isaac Price who we know we have already loaned out he's a 20 year old Northern Irish player who has come to us from Everton he has now gone out on loan to Accrington at 20 years old I think there's a lot more to come from him plays naturally on the left can also play through the middle of the park we have got a lot more names to cover uh we missed one off there ethan wady wadi he's a former chelsea goalkeeper he's played for hendon woking and then comes to us basically as a rotation piece 22 years old we rarely get injuries to goalkeepers on the game but he's very much a backup we have uh alfie gilchrist he's a player who comes from chelsea has been out on loan at lincoln getting some game time there and some experience so hopefully you'll come back to us a better player who else have we got we have got Tyrrell Ashcroft he is a right back who can play up the right hand side can also cover as a centre back his estimated cost is 2.3 to 3.7 million pounds so a decent enough signing if we need to move him on previously played for Reading Tottenham and Forest Green uh, who else do we have Dominic Cornes is pictured there in a Liverpool shirt. He has played for Liverpool. Uh, plays as a left-sided player. Can also play through the middle of the park. Bit of a versatile player. 21 years old. Hopefully a lot more development to come for him. We have Taylor Foran. He is a centre-back who used to play for Arsenal. Six foot four is a good height. He has good jumping reach, heading and tackling. So... As a former Arsenal player, he's a decent young prospect. I think he could end up getting into the first team quite regularly in the future. We have Lee Jonas, almost there for the free transfers, I promise. Uh, Lee Jonas is another centre-back, six foot tall, used to play for Liverpool. Uh, again, not really going to be a first teamer, but he has a bright future at the age of 19. And if it doesn't work out, £950,000 is the upper range of his value. We have Lewis Gibson. A uh, former player who was playing for Bristol Rovers, but he has played for Reading, Everton and Sheffield Wednesday. 23 years old, comes in valued at 7 to £7.6 million. Pounds. He's a centre-back, six foot one. He's a bit of a no-nonsense player, really. Wide centre-back, central defender, ball-playing defender, no-nonsense centre-back and a libero can play any of those positions naturally. So again, another young player who, if it doesn't work out, we should be making money off of him. We have Oliver Tipton, who we know we have already loaned out out he's another center back 20 years old comes to us from wolves has played for warsaw on loan this season any more free transfers kelland watts kelland watts is a player who was playing for newcastle has played for plymouth wigan and p 
Peterborough, 24 years old, six foot four. He's a rock solid centre back who will go straight into the first team. It does state there he can play as a left back too. Not really where we want him as a six foot four player. Uh, valued at 4.5 to 5 million pounds. So if he can play well, we keep him and if he doesn't again it's one of those we can sell on and the final free transfer of this portion is Laurent Tolage now I think this is a really shrewd signing come to us from well he's played for Brighton played for Cambridge played for Salford and he now joins us he has 14 finishing he has 14 pace 13 acceleration I think he's a really good championship striker we have plugged him in at the top of the formation and he seems to be flying at the club so far and then we started to sign some of the money using the players or the transfer money that we had got from players we had sold the first of the money purchases was john patrick he is a attacking midfielder who can play on the left or the right can also play as a makeshift striker he's irish but comes to us from Getafe. he's six foot four so quite tall to be a winger but he does have 14 pace 16 acceleration to go with it and has a nice price tag of eight to nine point four million pounds we then signed joanne Puig, he is a left back who comes to us from a Spanish club. I think it's so he's officially come to us from Espanol, but I don't think he was there. So Badalonia Foot or Costa Brava, I think, was the previous team that he had actually played for. I think he was on loan somewhere else, but he's a player that we've bought in we've spent some cash on he's valued at 325 to 900,000 six foot two left back 21 years old and I think he should settle in quite nicely as one of our first teamers we have Jonathan Gomez he plays left or right back so a player again versatile can play on either side uh, he's a USA international uh, valued at 5.8 to 6.6 .6 million pounds so a shrewd signing if that one works out we then signed Agna for £675,000. Uh, don't know how he popped up on our scouting report, but our scouts were familiar with a 19-year-old Brazilian who is six foot one and plays through the middle of the park, either as an attacking advanced playmaker or a central midfielder. So a shrewd signing for the future there. We then went and got Julimar, another Brazilian player with 14 finishing, 12 pace, 13 acceleration. So you can see that we're really building the squad up now. So we've got some strikers, we've got some wingers, signing defenders, getting Brazilians. It's really starting to come together. Uh, we went back to Brighton. We signed Ben Jackson. He's a centre-back, one for the future maybe, 20 years old, tackling of 12, jumping reach 14, acceleration of 13 and pace of 12. Came in just as a youngster, so one that we are developing for the future. And then we're getting to the end, I promise. We signed another Brazilian on a free transfer. This one's Leandrinho. Plays on the left-hand side primarily. Can be a striker too. 25 years old, valued at 6.4 to 8.4 million pounds. And I think he is a shrewd acquisition. And then the last two players we signed was Greg Olley. He has come into us from Bolton, but he's also played at Hull and Newcastle. Definitely just a rotation option at the age of 28. I think he's a player that will step in for cup games if we need him and then the final player that we signed was another brazilian julio cesar he's an attacking midfielder who plays with the center or as a striker he has 15 pace 14 acceleration 14 finishing and 14 dribbling so hopefully that is enough players for us to try and mold the squad to how we want um spent 2.5 million we recouped 3.2 million so we have a profit overall which is probably why the club are pleased in terms of the transfer business that we have done the free transfers some of them are for the future some of them are for now but i think in terms of building the squad it was a successful transfer window a quick overview of the competitions reveals that we have finished in ninth place once again finishing above a mid table team um brighton ended up winning the championship with hull Sunderland and Middlesbrough at the top of the table. We finished ninth on 74 points, so an improvement on last season. We were knocked out in the third round of the FA Cup by Bristol City and in the first round of the Carabao Cup by Sheffield United. We'll come back and recap exactly what happened in the leagues in just a minute.
After spending money then on the transfers that we bought in to the club, this is how the finances look. There is £3.4 million now as the overall balance. And there is 686000 available to us to spend for Season 3. Now, obviously, we had a major overhaul of the playing squad at the end of Season 2. It could end up happening again where we just go and smash the free transfer markets and maybe try and buy just one or two cash players. But, having said that, £686,000 if we wheel and deal again there is enough there for us to go and buy enough quality I think to be challenging in season 3 for the, at least the playoffs uh, the wage budget is £216,000 per week we're only spending 200000 of it so we have a good amount there in the kitty for wages a quick look at the club vision reveals that once again we are in the process of a takeover bid. Whether it will go through or not this time I don't know. I think that's about the 317th time that there's been a bid or something happening with a takeover. But looking at what the board's long term visions and expectations are. They want us to work within the wage budget. We're well on course with that and grow the club's reputation. They're satisfied with that. Uh, moving from 11th to 9th it's not earth shattering but we are moving in the right direction at least. Uh, maximum one year contracts for the players over the age of 34 we're still not really signing players over the age of 34 and if we have to renew it's only because they're star players and it's only if the wages work out for the budget we have minimum two year contracts for first team players we're hitting that by the end of next season now they want us to reach the playoffs so the board are starting to get more ambitious and they want to be competitive in the efl cup which is disappointing for them because we've been out in the first round the last two seasons looking at the board then their feedback is c plus in terms of our job uh, our job security is stable um the board culture now they just want to develop players using the club's youth system still so i think at this point we're going to start looking at what players have come through we've had a few players out on loan that we're trying to develop and hopefully now we can bring some players into the first team uh, notable highlights pleased with the quality of the pressing from the geigen press uh, happy with the finances involved with the deal to loan out Riley Siddle and pleased with the comfortable 4-1 victory against QPR. They are disappointed with the 3-1 loss against Sunderland, disappointed with the 2-0 loss against Blackpool and disappointed with the 3-1 loss against Hull City. Switching to the supporters then, we have a C-plus from them too. They want to strive to make progress on and off the pitch. Still want to be competitive against Villa and Leicester if we play them. They're happy with the Geigen press. They're pleased with the decision to send Riley Siddle out on loan. And they're pleased with the comfortable 4-1 championship humbling of QPR. They are disappointed though with the defeat against Sunderland. Gustavo Hamer's recent performances. Again, he's been locked in a dispute about contracts he had a contract he still wants a new contract so it's been ongoing for a little while he's going to sign a new contract i believe so we are going to have him for the next season but it's been ongoing so i think it's affected his performances and they're disappointed about a 2-0 defeat to blackpool Let's go back then and break down the championship season that happened in season two so we finished in ninth place we played 46 games we won 21 of those. We drew 11. We lost 14. We scored 80 goals this season, but did concede 67. And even though we had a plus 8 last season, we have a plus 13 goal difference this season. But we do have 8 more points, finishing on 74. So we finished 21 points behind Brighton, who won the league. And looking that they want us to be a playoff team, Ipswich, I think, are that team. And we are 8 points behind them, so we are making steady progress and steady steps forward. We are miles clear now of the relegation zone, and I don't think that is where we will be looking. I mean, if you look at the form at the end here, we actually dropped off at the the end of the season after we beat QPR we had a 2-2 draw with Sheffield Wednesday and then we lost the last three games of the season so if we had a bit of momentum at the end of the season we could have actually been a bit closer to Ipswich at that end of the table in sixth place so to think that we finished on 74 points and Sheffield United finished on 81 is actually a pretty good season overall if we look at the profile of the league and go to the league table there again as i said brighton hull sunderland and middlesbrough uh, are in for a chance of promotion so brighton and hull going up automatically sunderland and middlesbrough in the playoff final and then at the bottom we've got millwall portsmouth and sheffield wednesday getting relegated if we look at some of the stats for goals our top goal scorer was talaj with 17 
didn't have anybody else on that screen. In terms of the average ratings, we had Kelland Watts. He was in fourth place with a 7.18 average rating. Lewis Gibson with a 7.11. Looking at assists, we have Gustavo Hamer as our top assister on nine. We also have Fabio Tavares on seven. <clears throat> Player of the Match Awards, let's have a little look there. Kellen Watts leading the way with four for us. Clean sheets, I don't think we're going to feature on there. Simon Moore actually did finish joint 12th with 12 clean sheets, so not that bad. Yellow cards, we have Hamer on 18 and Watts on 14, so maybe we need to look at stepping back the tackling a little bit there. Uh, Jenkins finished on 15.03 kilometres per 90 minutes. Uh, nobody in the tackles or the dribbles per 90 minutes. Rounding out the rest of the competitions once again then. So knocked out in the third round by Bristol City in the FA Cup. And knocked out in the first round by Sheffield United in the Carabao Cup. To round out season two then. We're going to have a quick look at the best 11s. Starting off with this version which is Adi Vivish, Who is our assistant manager. So he thinks our best 11 is more in goal. Gomez, Gibson, Watts, Ashcroft, Hamer, Randall, Leandrinho, Agna, John Patrick on the right with Talaj up top. And luckily, in this view, you get to see what they think our best youth 11 would be. Considering we have some good youth prospects at the club, these are some of the names you might be seeing in the near future. So we've got Reynolds in goal, Bayliss, Ben Jackson, Dobson, Batanwi. We've got Galbraith in the middle with Bowden, Cockrell, Aubrey, Benjamin and Paul Williams up top. So as I said, we do have a good youth academy and those are some of the stars that are looking to break through for season three. Looking at the other version of the assistant report then, so you can see that this lines up with Moore, Gomez, Gibson, Watts and Ashcroft, Hamer, Randall, Leandrinho, Agner, John Patrick and Talage. So looking at that in terms of season three we do need to improve in quite a few places uh simon moore's contract is going to be running out i'm not going to renew it because of the amount that he earns i think we can get a better goalkeeper who is of a similar talent level to what he is uh, left back i think he's sorted center backs look good ashcroft maybe is a little bit vulnerable at right back we might go out and try and break the market and see if we can get a better right back in terms of the middle Hamer is definitely a lock as our best player uh, Randall not 100% sure that he's going to be of the standard to get us to that next level Leandrino is fine John Patrick's fine Agnes fine and as I said Talage scoring goals for fun at the top of the pitch so we probably need another striker maybe another couple of wingers because if we have either of those two go down it kind of is a step down in quality so those are the positions we're going to look for uh it's definitely going to be a right back definitely going to be a couple of wingers maybe a midfielder and a striker just to complement to large at the top of the pitch looking at some of the strengths and weaknesses of the team just picking a few out uh, lack of eccentricity again amongst the goalkeepers is not a bad thing i don't think um Youth prospects, a number of talented players now coming through. Stephen Maitland, Peter Andrade and Elliot Betjamin. Uh, Lewis Gibson has been in fantastic form. Jonathan Gomez is the best of four good options able to play at right back, even though he's lining up at left back on that screen. Uh, Gibson is one of eight good options at centre back. We now have midfield depth with Ethan Galbraith one of the best of seven good options able to play in defensive midfield looking at the weaknesses uh, balance rushing out tendency for goalkeepers goalkeeper depth as i said more is going to move on so we're going to buy a few goalkeepers to try and plug that gap stamina strength reflexes so things to really work on in training so that brings us to the end of season two the date is the second of june 2024 which means that in the next episode we're going to push on into season three and continue the rebuild i think now is the time we need to kick on if we're going to get to the premier league and stay in the premier league by the end of the five seasons that i've given myself to do this we're really going to need to kick on in season three and try and knuckle down firstly get promoted and then just try and do our very best to stay in the premier league so if you're at this point of the video you're still watching firstly a big thank you secondly if you don't mind hitting the thumbs up and the subscribe button to help the channel out the growth on the channel has been fantastic across the past couple of weeks really cannot say thank you enough to all the people that have given their time to the channel before you go don't forget there are other things on the channel such as tactics wonder kids let's plays there is a little something for everybody on the channel but for this one i'm going to wrap it up there i'll see you on the next episode of the coventry city rebuild